Hello and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Now in 1 Chronicles 24, David is still setting out how the worship is to happen in his tabernacle. So he goes, the descendants of Aaron gives them responsibility. More descendants of the Levites give them responsibility. And uh, it is very clear that David wants worship to be at the center of life in Israel. And so should it be with us as the people of God. Worship of Jesus should be at the center of our lives. But now let's move on to Luke 21 because uh, Jesus looked and he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. And he also saw a poor widow put her two copper coins in. And she says, listen, she has given more than the rich guy because she's given out of her poverty. And then at that point, the disciples look at the splendor of the temple. This is the temple that Herod built and there were jewels and all sorts of precious stones and laden in the temple. And Jesus says, but Jesus said, but as for uh, you, what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. And then the disciples said, well, when is this going to happen? So now, listen, we've got to be careful what he's talking about here. He's talking about the destruction of this temple that Herod built, which was in Jerusalem. And so he tells them, this is what's going to happen. Many will come in my name. Do not believe them. There'll be wars and uprisings. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There'll be great earthquakes, famines, pestilences, signs from the heaven above. And people will persecute you. Who? The church. And you'll be thrown into prison on account of my name. For I will give you the words to say. Don't worry about what you're going to say. Verse 16 says, you'll be betrayed even by your parents and your brothers and your sisters and your relatives. And But stand firm because those who live like life like this for me will, will receive life. When you see Jerusalem being surrounded by the armies, these are talking about the Roman armies that were going to come against Jerusalem in AD 70, about 40 years after he's writing, you will know that the desolation is near. What's he talking about? The destruction of the temple. So till this point, he's talking about these signs that will, will, will precede the coming of the Romans around Jerusalem to destroy this particular temple. And he says how dreadful it will be in those days for nursing and pregnant women and uh, you will be taken prisoner. And Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. And so this actually did happen. Josephus, uh, who was a famous uh, Jewish historian, describes how one million Jews were killed during this period. And that 97,000 were escaped or escaped death by being taken into slavery. But the Christians escaped. Thousands of Christians escaped because Jesus had warned them to flee, to escape when they saw the signs of the Gentiles surrounding Jerusalem. And so uh, this uh, section up till verse 24 is not talking about the second coming of Jesus. It's talking about that destruction. Now, uh, we are also given an encouragement here by Jesus on how to respond when this persecution comes. He's basically saying, look, this persecution is going to give you an opportunity to witness to kings. This, during this persecution, the Holy Spirit will teach you what to say. Uh, and uh, during the suffering, you'll be kept safe. Some of you might think that's paradoxical, but he's saying, no, during that suffering, you'll be kept safe and your faith will be kept safe. And there's going to be a reward for those who endure through this. He also gave them permission to run. He said, you can run when the Romans come, when the Gentiles come, when this season comes, you can come. So I'm going to give you the signs so that you know when it happens. But now this issue here that when the time of the Gentiles is over, then we see further down, the son of man will come on a cloud with power. So when this Gentile season is over, the son of man will come. Now, you know, people have debated as to when the time of the Gentiles is over. So we know the Gentiles, you know, first came against Jerusalem in 600 BC. Then there was that massive onslaught at 70 AD. And actually, right up until 1967, when the Israeli state was formed, which is a hugely contentious thing in the world today, uh, there was not a Jewish state. There was not a temple where worship was happening. So some people say that was the time of the Gentiles being over. But there is a problem with interpreting it that way because Jesus didn't return in 1967, did he? And there has not been a big revival in Jerusalem at this yet point yet has there. And then there's also the understanding that when he talks about 
the real Jews. In Romans chapter 2, real Jews are those who've had a circumcision of the heart, not those with the bloodline of Abraham. Uh, there is the bloodline of Abraham, the remnant, and that the, those of us who've been circumcised by the heart are grafted into that remnant. But the real Jews he's talking about here are Christians and a revival in Jerusalem. And Romans 11 makes that very clear, that there will be a revival in Jerusalem and then Jesus will return. So then from verse 25 onwards, we're talking about the second coming of Jesus. And so, and, he's, and then he, he ends by saying, and on that day, you need to be watchful. You need to be careful because the Son of Man will come when you least experience it, expect it. So uh, this is a fascinating chapter. I think the first 24 verses are talking about uh, definitely the time before AD 70. And then as we get closer to the return of Jesus, it coincides with a massive outpouring of his spirit on Jerusalem, where we will see true Jews, that is those born of Abraham's descent, and you and me uh, flooding into Jerusalem to see a great revival in that place. God bless you as we go through these very exciting times.